Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked On Wolves. This is the post game podcast from the Wolves Lost the Lakers. Another tough weekend for the Wolves. We'll talk about what the Wolves did right in a shorthanded loss to LA, especially Nas Reed's first half, but also Minnesota's failure to adjust to the Lakers' in game adjustments. We'll break it all down. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today on NissanUSA.com. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you had a fantastic weekend. Uh, unfortunately, not a victory Monday, a tough weekend for the Wolves, dropping the overtime game to Cleveland on Friday and then losing to the Lakers on ESPN, uh, both games on ESPN, actually losing to the Lakers in L.A. on Sunday. And uh, this is the post game pod from Sunday's show. We'll focus on that. Haven't had a show since the Rudy. We'll call it antics on Friday night. So we get into that a little bit. We'll see how we'll see how the show goes. Uh, but I want to mostly talk Wolves Lakers from Sunday. Um, so that'll be the focus here today. A lot to get to. A big thank you off the top for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon. That's with two B's, two E's, C K E N. All right. Um, so the Timberwolves go into this game against the Lakers on Sunday and we obviously knew Carl Anthony Towns was out. Monte Morris had missed Friday's game with the hamstring injury. He suffered in the first half of Thursday's win over the Pacers. So it was like he was actually already ruled as out. Both Gobert and Ant were questionable. And, uh, then Kyle Anderson ended up not playing as well. I think it was a sore shoulder for slow-mo. So no Kyle Anderson, no Monte Morris, and of course, no Rudy or no cat. That means the Wolves are down four of their top nine rotation players, two starters, and uh, I mean, Kyle Anderson is is the substitute starter that plays when Cat is hurt. So two starters, two rotation, two other rotation guys. That means that Nas Reed has to start because there's no slow-mo. So Nas starts his first game of the year, which means you lose his bench scoring. And also Nick Alexander-Walker starts at the three, meaning that Jade McDaniel starts at the four, which he's barely played this year, like a handful of minutes here and there. He's played it at the three. Uh, of course, he almost exclusively played the, or excuse me. Uh, yeah, sorry. At the four, he's played almost exclusively the three this season. Now, early in his career, he mostly played the four, but that's changed, right? The Wolves much prefer to play big. And that's what McDaniels has, has been doing is playing the three. He, in fact, he's probably he's like, he's played more at the two than he has the three at the four this season. Excuse me. So an unconventional lineup for Minnesota, unconventional by their standards. And the Lakers are, you know, relatively, I know Jared Vanderbilt's out. Um, I know uh, Gabe Vincent's still out, but they've been out, right? The Lakers had LeBron. Of course, they had D'Lo. They had Anthony Davis. They they had all their guys that have been in and out in the lineup, in and out of the lineup throughout the season. And uh, Minnesota was, I believe, on FanDuel, four and a half point underdogs coming into this one. And I mean, they were only down four at the end of the first quarter. They scored 40 in the second quarter and uh, were actually down by just a single point at halftime. The Lakers shot 67% in the first half and yet only led this game by a point at halftime. The Wolves started the game by trying to be a little bit more aggressive defensively. And this is kind of my key takeaway from this game. And and we'll talk uh, more broadly about this as we go throughout the show. But the 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 biggest Lakers, there were two big adjustments in this game, by one by each team. Minnesota defensively was being more aggressive early. They were trying to put two on the ball. Um, effectively, it wasn't quite the the two years ago, Jared Vanderbilt, Timberwolves, Patrick Beverly, Timberwolves blitzing strategy, but it was similar. Basically, when when it made sense, the Wolves were sending two at the ball and trying to force the ball, um, you know, trying to essentially force Lakers into making mistakes. Trying to 
um, generate turnovers to get easy buckets in transition, which I understand the strategy because the Wolves have an offense that struggled quite a bit at times this year. Doesn't have Carl Anthony Towns. Doesn't even have the Rudy Gobert, I guess you could say, safety blanket in terms of like, hey, let's play, you know, just a lot of two-man game in the half court. Like with no Rudy, that becomes much more difficult. And, you know, the Lakers, the the, the one the one issue there is Lakers are fine with playing fast. They're a fast paced, you know, they're, I think top five in the league in pace. Um, but the Wolves still said, Hey, let's try and get some easy offense and transition this way. Let's jumpstart our offense by being aggressive defensively. And also we don't have Rudy on the back line. Right. So like what the Wolves do when they didn't have Rudy, they played blitz or they, they blitz, they played high wall pick and roll, right? They sent cat and Vando and those guys out on the perimeter to try and force the ball to ball handlers hands, try and force the, um, the offense to, you know, into difficult passes. Um, and the Lakers made some mistakes early, but the Wolves didn't generate enough early turnovers. They ended up shifting their philosophy into more. They mixed in a lot of zone in the second quarter and the Lakers scored a bunch, but the Wolves did generate some turnovers really weirdly out of zone and out of some switching concepts where um, they were switching basically everything at one point in the second quarter. And that's kind of how the Wolves lived the rest of the game was instead of the ultra aggressive blitzing on the perimeter, putting two on the ball, they decided to, they played less zone in the second half, but it was basically like, Hey, you guys can't shoot the lights out all game. And while that was mostly true, LeBron decided to up his usage. He only had, I think five points at halftime and he finished with 29 and just got way more aggressive early in the third quarter. And then uh, the Lakers, of course, built this, I think it was 13, 14 point lead mid third quarter. And then the Wolves pushed back by generating all these turnovers that I was talking about. They got it a bunch of easy buckets. They got some open threes themselves and the Wolves took some leads end of third, early fourth quarter uh, before the Lakers ultimately pulled away, which is a, what I want to get into next is, is what the Lakers did defensively that threw a wrench in the Wolves because the Wolves scored Again, 40 in the second quarter. The Wolves had 68 in the first half with no Cat and with no Rudy Gobert and with uh, Ant not shooting the ball well at all early in this game and really for the game period, but especially early. Missed his first five three-point attempts. Had uh, I think he was in single digits at halftime scoring-wise. But Nas had 21 in the first half. McLaughlin was effective shooting the ball from deep. Um and again, they played fast enough. Like the Wolves said, hey, we can play at that game too. We know we're a slow-paced team. You're a fast-paced team. But, you know, uh, our philosophy is going to be to try and force the ball to move on your end of the floor, uh, to try and dictate where the ball's swinging to, and then jump passing lanes, get going the other way. And sure enough, I mean, the Lakers, again, had had a lot of turnovers late third quarter, but a lot of first-half turnovers. LA turned over 19 times. It looked like the Wolves for a while there because the Wolves were so aggressive defensively. And that's partly what fueled Minnesota was the fast break. Um, and they, they finished what they ended up minus one in fast break points for the game, but points off turnovers, Minnesota had 28 points, actually Lakers had 21 turnovers, not 19. They had 28 points on 21 Laker turnovers. So that part of the strategy worked for Minnesota. The problem was when they got behind the half court offense, couldn't keep up. The defense wasn't good enough. The interior defense, when when the Lakers broke through, when they got past the perimeter defense, which was spotty for Minnesota at best, there was no backline defense. I shouldn't say no backline defense. Nas had some good moments, but it wasn't what we're used to seeing when Rudy, Rudy Gobert's on the floor. And then the Lakers started to pull away. They built a double-digit lead. The Wolves could not score in the half court well enough, partly due to some Lakers adjustments and the Wolves' inability to adjust to those adjustments on offense or at least to execute. Um, so I want to talk about that here next, and then we'll get into individual studs and duds here toward the end of the show. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder is also part of the incredible lineup at Nissan. 
The Pathfinder has room for up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon fire TV and the free fire TV channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free fire TV channels app. All right. So as the game wore on the Lakers buttoned themselves, button themselves up. Buckled down. I don't know. I'm mixing metaphors there. They they started playing better defensively. Pick your metaphor. And it was largely due to, it was a reaction to what Nas did in the first half. And if I'm the Lakers, I would have been surprised because, um, I mean, like, hey, if Ant, obviously Ant is problem number one, if you're the opposing team, right? Nobody else on the Wolves is going to generate their own offense or is even anywhere near as dynamic as a score in any situation, especially Nobody would ever describe Rudy Gobert as a dynamic scorer, but he's at least dangerous and has a lot of gravity to him, right? But with no Rudy, no Cat, um, obviously, this team is going to run through Ant, and then the only other guy that's got any real scoring punch is Nas Reed, right? Like, the Wolves aren't going to run offense through Jaden McDaniels. They're not going to run plays for Nikhil Alexander-Walker, right? Nas was always going to be the guy that the Lakers needed to worry about. And they didn't do a good job on him in the first half. And Anthony Davis was more or less guarding him, but there were, you know, the Lakers flipped his own at one point, like LeBron passed him off to nobody. And now he's got a wide open three. Like they weren't contesting his threes. They weren't getting out on him. It's like, they didn't realize he was a 40 plus three point shooter. It was kind of nuts. But then in the second half credit the Lakers coaching staff for making the adjustment. They basically had Anthony Davis play free safety. Like what the wolves do with Rudy. Almost, almost like that. And, he basically like it's what the wolves do when like when the wolves played the thunder and they said Rudy guard quote unquote you know air quotes guard Josh Giddy and what that means is hang out near the paint cleanse yourself every 2.9 seconds get back in block shots to deter, deter guys step up and try and force you know guys into weird push shots and travels and turnovers at 10 12 feet away because they don't know what to do when they see you lurking but don't guard Josh Giddy. Like, let that dude shoot threes. Well, that's what the Lakers did with Jaden McDaniels. They, they really did. Um, and Jaden had a rough game. And side side note, Jaden McDaniels is down before this game. He was 36.1% from three on the season. And he was 0 for 5 in this game. So that's going to dip well below 36%. Last year, he was a shade under 40%. Remember, two years ago, he was 31.7% from three. Okay. And it was a concern of mine last year, like, hey, is Jaden ever going to shoot enough to be who everybody thinks he could be? Well, we're seeing a bit of regression there, and the defense, at least lately, hasn't been nearly as good either. We'll talk about this later, uh, because I do think Jaden is doing some things better. He's better when he puts the ball on the floor. He's obviously got that you know weird eight-foot floating to his left pull-up shot down, too. But... um it, it, this just was not a good Jaden game. All that to say, like we can talk bigger picture stuff with McDaniels later, but the Lakers just didn't guard him and said, we're going to make him beat us. And we've seen McDaniels confidently shoot corner threes in the past. He did not do that in this game and was not effective from the corners uh, for the season. By the way, he is 41% from the corners, which is good. It's not an outstanding corner three mark, but it's good enough that you wouldn't, you wouldn't leave a 40% corner three point shooter just wide open. The Lakers did it and he never made them pay. I think, I think three of uh, four of his five or three of his five, at least three point attempts were from the corners just wasn't a good game for McDaniels and the Lakers left him wide open. The wolves couldn't find a way to counteract that. Um, I don't, I like, and I don't, I don't know a hundred percent what the wolves should have done necessarily. I mean, one option would have been, I'm not sure that the problem was not enough Luca Garza, but like, which by the way, Garza played his first non garbage time minutes of the season in this game. They could have stayed big and taking McDaniels off the floor, but then you run into those problems defensively. The Lakers, it was a layup line anyway um, at times in this game, so the Wolves weren't staying in front of guys on the perimeter, and, and I get that the argument against that is is exactly that. Like, Garza can't defend near, you know, there's a reason he doesn't 
play regularly in the NBA, right? He's not a great defender. He, his as as great as he is in a lot of areas, and he's improved in terms of his versatility and and really, um, I guess, lateral movement. He doesn't have the foot speed, right? But the counter to the counterpoint is the Lakers got 14 offensive rebounds, 10 of them by Anthony Davis. I know that at least one of them was an and one over Luca Garza, but at least that dude's going to put a body on somebody and you go a little bit bigger with Luca and Nas. And I know they tried to go ultra big at one point. TJ Warren was basically playing shooting guard at one point. Um, but like if McDaniels isn't going to be able to make a three, you got to adjust. And if you put Luca and Nas out there, you probably have a lineup where all five, you would have a lineup where all five guys are threats from three. And theoretically you are when McDaniels is out there, but um, whatever the wolves, the wolves did not react and McDaniels did not make the Lakers pay. And it also allowed Davis basically playing free safety sagging off of McDaniels allowed him to deter Nas drives. Um, he blocked one Nas shot at one point or Nas shot at one point. LeBron blocked the Nas shot at one point. Um, it just kind of collapsed the defense on both Nas and Anthony Edwards for that matter. And the wolves did not shoot the ball from three anywhere near as well as they did early in the game. As the game wore on, they struggled Ant finished two of nine outside the arc. Nas was five of 10, but he was, I think five of seven at one point, missed his last three and Jaden was Oh five. Um, it, it was just not a, a good reaction from Minnesota to what the Lakers chose to do defensively. And, and it was disappointing to see that, um, they couldn't, they couldn't have a solve for that. I talked a little about Luca's rotation minutes. Um, it's remarkable. Like, obviously, you're missing four guys. So, of course, there's going to be guys that don't normally play that are playing. But, I mean, this is a deep team. And you got TJ Warren on a 10-day contract who's playing heavy minutes, rotation minutes, and play out in uh, close games against playoff teams. Each of his first three games with the Wolves, he played 23 minutes in this game. He was not as good as he was the last couple times out. He was fine. He took a couple ill-advised shots. Um and missed a, a big corner three when the Wolves were, I think it was like a 12 point game with four or five to play that would have cut it to single digits. And he missed the corner three. Um, TJ Warren was fine. I thought Luca was good. Got hacked real badly by LeBron on a shot that at a pretty crucial point, uh, early fourth quarter, late third quarter, when it was a close game that wasn't called and, and the Wolves bench went nuts. Um, I, I think, my issue is I, I'm not like saying Luca should have played a lot more minutes. I think that could have helped here to go a little bit bigger. Uh, Conley didn't have a good game. Like I know why you want Conley on the floor, but maybe it's Alexander and Ant in the backcourt. Uh, excuse me, Alexander Walker and Ant in the backcourt, kind of sharing point guard duties. And you know, the, you also have Nas out there. You have Luca out there, and I don't care. T.J. Warren can be your three, right? If you're worried about McDaniel's, um, or you can still have McDaniel's out there, but play a little bit bigger. Uh, and try and combat the offensive rebound issues and also points of the paint slash free throw attempts. I mean, Minnesota lost the points of the paint battle by 20 in this game. They were probably never going to win it with no Rudy and no Carl Anthony Towns, right? Like they probably were never going to win the points of the paint battle, but trying to overcome a 20 point deficit points in the paint. Plus the Lakers attempted 16 more free throws than Minnesota in this game. Minnesota was out free throw 29 to 13. And it was way, I don't want to say way more. It was certainly more about the Lakers aggression and offensive rebounding and, you know, just being at the rim than it was about officiating. Like the Lakers should have shot more free throws than Minnesota in this game. I, I, I want to be very clear about that. Officiated is not what lost the Wolves this game. However, it still wasn't great. The officiating still was not great. Uh, the Lakers were the aggressors. There's a reason they shot more free throws. Um, but man, Anthony Davis got 13 free throw attempts in this game. The Wolves as a team had 13. Luca should have had another pair of free throws. And by the way, two of their 13 free throws came in garbage time with Luca Garza getting to the line. But it, Luca should have had two more. Um, Ant somehow only shot four free throws despite attempting 14 two point shots in this game. So yeah, it wasn't great, but it was far more about the Lakers being the aggressors and credit to the Lakers for it. I mean, seriously, the, the Lakers were, they were, Aggressive sometimes to a fault in this game with those 19 turnovers. All right. Let's close with studs and duds. And I guess because I brought up the officials, I should talk about the Rudy stuff briefly, ever so briefly. Um, I want to talk bigger picture stuff on Tuesday. So I don't want to bog down and spend too much time on officials and Rudy. And then I also want to look at the Tuesday night Wolves Clippers game. So we'll do all that on Tuesday show. A little bit of Rudy here and studs and duds here coming up next.
Today's episode of Locked Out Wolves is brought to us by our friends at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion, that's a billion with a B, professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or the resources to hire. They're constantly finding ways to make the process easier. LinkedIn even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NBA. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Um, let's do studs and duds here. Uh, should be. It is pretty easy for this one. Studs, it still has to be Nas. I, like, I know he had a rough second half. It wasn't entirely his fault. He, he needed to be a high-usage guy. He was really good, and he's really what kept the Wolves in the game in the first half. I know there were some turnovers mixed in there, but, man, he he battled. 42 minutes for Nas in this game. Easily a season high. 25 points, 9 of 17 shooting, 5 of 10 outside the arc, 2 of 3 at the line, 5 boards, 3 assists, 4 blocks for Nas Reed, a, a pair on the same play against Anthony Davis. Um, he had a big win on LeBron too. Just a, a strong game from Nas. Uh, it really was. And without him, they're probably down double digits at halftime. Really. Uh, so a stud for Nas. Um, I'm also going to give a stud to Nikhil Alexander Walker. Um, I thought he played well. There were some moments defensively. Like, I mean, he, he, realistically, he isn't going to be able to bro, blo, uh, defend. Excuse me, LeBron backing him down on the block like that's not that's not a great position for Alexander Walker to be in. Overall, I thought he played a good game. Fifteen, seven, and five. Fifteen points on six of eleven shooting it was three of four on threes. Hit three three threes in a row before he airballed one late from the corner. That was also uh, you know that one of the TJ Warren ones stand out to me as big shots from role players that didn't go in. Uh, Seven boards, five assists, two steals, only one turnover for Nikhil. So a strong game. And I'll throw this out there. In a game the Wolves lost by 11, he was only a minus three in plus minus. Um, TJ Warren and Jordan McLaughlin were the only guys that were positives uh, in, in the plus minus category for the Wolves, uh, not including garbage time. So uh, a stud for Nas, a stud for Naw. And I'm going to go Jordan McLaughlin. I mean, like, Jordan McLaughlin is four of nine on threes. All nine of his shot attempts were threes, 12 points, four rebounds, two assists, only one turnover. The turnover was a bad one. It was it was a bad one right before uh, quarter break, I think, at the end of the third quarter. Uh, it, was, it was just a bad turnover. The Wolves ended up scoring anyway at the very end. Um, but end of the third quarter? I don't know. End of one of the quarters. But I thought McLaughlin was good. And, like, he's got to be with no Monte Morris and also, you know, just, just jet and also no Kyle Anderson, who also sees – time, you know, sees reps manning that second unit or, or directing that second unit. Um, I thought it was a good McLaughlin game. Best on, on the team in plus minus. Some good moments overall. Uh, so he gets a stud as well. Duds, Jade McDaniels, we talked quite a bit about him, but the numbers are not great. 10 points on 17 shots. Missed all five of his three-point attempts. 32 minutes, 17 shot attempts. Never got to the line. Uh, which isn't that unusual for him, but he also doesn't usually shoot the ball 17 times. 12 two-point attempts and no free throws for McDaniel. Seven boards, two steals, and an assist. He only committed one foul, weirdly. Um, he also only played 32 minutes despite the one foul. So, you know, uh, like they did have some moments where TJ Warren was out there instead of him, uh, but it just wasn't a strong McDaniels game. Um, I'm not going to give Conley a dud in this game, but it, it again was kind of a, a ho hum Conley game, and with no Monte Morris and and again no none of these other guys that are going to be you know that carry some of the scoring load in terms of well certainly Cat, but also Rudy. Uh, you know Mike got to do more than attempt six shots. 
Nine points on six shots for Conley. Six assists, no turnovers, three rebounds, and a steal for for Mike Conley in this one. So, end of the day, you know, like, with Rudy, they probably win this game by multiple possessions. I, I believe that. I mean, um, he makes that big of a difference defensively. Like, the Lakers don't shoot. They don't score 120 on 53% shooting with Rudy on the floor. They just don't. Um, I don't mind the Lakers matchup at all for Minnesota if they were to end up in a I'm sure that'll get thrown back at me if the Wolves end up in like a, uh, I don't know, a two seven situation against the Lakers or something come April. But anyway, I don't mind the matchup when fully healthy. This game, it was frustrating because the Wolves were right there, but it was always going to be tough. It was always going to be tough given the, uh, the players available and unavailable for Minnesota in this one. All right. Final Rudy thoughts. I said this, I was on locked on, um, Locked on NBA on the Locked on NBA show on Monday. And I talked to Jackson Gatlin about this a little bit. Um, so go check that out if you haven't listened. Locked on NBA, the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts and also on YouTube. Um, the Rudy thing on Friday, like he obviously, it goes without saying the technical was dumb. Like he shouldn't have done that, obviously. Terrible time to do it. The whole thing. I also wish he hadn't, like I, I get it, like, you know, go get him big Rue, like the whole thing, like, uh, you know, I guess channeling my inner aunt saying that, but saying that stuff publicly, what he said about sports betting is, uh, it's a tough, it's a tough thing because now you can't imagine, like, even if I'm not saying there are refs that are influenced by that, but if there are not all of them are. And so the ones that aren't, and probably even the ones that potentially are like, I don't know, Nobody's going to like it, right? Like the, none of the refs are going to see this positively. And it's the same thing only on a more serious level as the cat thing. I always talk about it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and there's a subconscious human bias involved. Like there just is, um, officials look at cat and they go, all right, we're looking for this offensive foul. Cause we know he does it. a little bit, of, uh, a little bit of his scouting, right? Scouting reports for refs. Like they do that stuff. They know what to look for. And other and other teams, opponents will tell the refs at the start of the game, like, hey, look for this. You know, cat likes the hook, right? It's like that. But if officials are like, okay, we know the wolves think we're cheaters, like remember the ant comment after the Thunder win uh back in January, the win over the Thunder when he said the thing about cheating refs. Like if the refs think the wolves are think that they're cheating, are things ever going to go better for the wolves? And I know it's the refs jobs to be unbiased. Like they should be able to be because by definition, they are officiating the game from an unbiased perspective. But do we really think that as human beings, they will not have any sort of an unconscious bias ever fair or unfair. And it is unfair. The wolves aren't helping themselves with this. Now, I also think Chris Finch can stand up for his players and every coach, you know, like there's a, there's gamesmanship to this, right? But the Rudy, the Rudy comments are not helpful. And I appreciate that he's willing to speak his mind on some level. And I certainly agree. The Wolves have gotten the short end of the stick a lot this year, and they have over the years. It just they just do. I also think that this team in the playoffs, if well, this does not help them. In the playoffs, when there's more of a physical game and there's less open fast break, open court fast breaking. There's more half court offense. There's more drawn out possessions, less possessions overall. That benefits Minnesota. And officials that allow a more physical game, which usually is in the playoffs, that will benefit Minnesota. So in the long run, you know, maybe, maybe Rudy is playing the long game better than I can imagine, and it'll be fine. Uh, but the comments are, you know, the gesture, obviously, the T, like none of that's great. The comments to me were worse. Uh, not in terms of that game, but in terms of the long-term ramifications for the Wolves. You know, I just, I worry about, uh, retaliation is a strong word, but that sort of thing from the officiating overall. Um, all that to say, Friday, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about Friday's game. It was a terribly officiated game. It was really, really bad. Um, really bad. That's all I really have to say about that. I don't, I don't, you know, everyone knows that. Um, that's that watch that game and, and cares to be honest about it. So anyway, that's all we have for you today. Of course, uh, Tuesday, we'll have the regular podcast Tuesday morning. I'm actually hosting the live postcast following Wolves Clippers late Tuesday. So it'll be 
after midnight, but I'll be hosting live, I believe, with Jack Borman. Um, so tune in for that here. Uh, well, actually, at Locked On Sports Minnesota Live on YouTube, and then also you can listen uh, here on Locked On Wolves on the audio feed. And then I'll have my show on Wednesday, this regular show on Wednesday, the post game pod, Minnesota Basketball Party Wednesday. Tons of stuff um, here upcoming this week. So lots of shows in the coming days. A big thank you for making Locked On Wolves your first listen every single day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes uh, YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch on the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Locked On T-Wolves and also at the Beacon with two Bs, two Es, CK. And the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.